Good morning, I'm opening this window because it is smelling like food already. It is 7.30 a.m. I woke up like an hour ago and we are already in the kitchen doing some prep for some shoots. Today we're doing a bomb sandwich. Um, I just bought these gloves because between cooking and touching food and then touching my really expensive camera, um, I don't like, you know, mixing those, those germs, but um, we're making, trying to do like a pork belly situation. We'll see if that works. Also, we uh, scrolled on TikTok last night and we are slowly but surely making our way through the straight eyebrow trend. And so far I'm loving it. Um, I mean, it's very like Asian-y, so um, there's that, but. We're doing that and then we're gonna do some like up close shots um, and let's see if I can take y'all along for the ride. Yesterday I did so much shooting and recorded none of it but I needed to focus. Oh, here's some leftover from like did a little charcuterie, char charcuterie cup yesterday. Um, and then we'll be doing a few other things today. So for these banh mi bowls, we're using a ramen brand and we're gonna do deconstructed bowls. Um, one thing, I know this is a mess, but typically when I am about to shoot, I will prep everything on a board because um, my studio is not on the same floor as my kitchen. Um, but I will prep everything on the board, make sure I have all the ingredients out before I shoot because when I start shooting and cooking, I'm kind of in a zone and I don't want to miss any ingredients. So everything that needs to be in the shoot or anything that needs to be in the photo will be on the board. So we have romeo, baguette, pickle, on, or carrot, cilantro, jalapeno. Um, not sure if I want to add lettuce to this bond me TBD. Um, and then obviously some meat, um, and then the brand. You're a pretty little Bobby playing every time I got you, you do. You do. Girl, you hold me, you're so soft, and you feed me, and you watch me. We are shooting this and I have to tell you, this is the craziest. I've never, like I don't really do much product photography, but we're doing food too. And I just made the craziest, messiest, I don't know if y'all can see it. It's like this bon me balancing on top of some nudes while there are like two or three toothpicks holding this thing together. I'll try to bring a closer look, but that is like full on just craziness so um that took a lot of work it's a controlled chaos but uh, now i'm gonna shoot it pocket with your keys and with your body you do you do when you pressing all my buttons you be turning at me on yeah you do i like the way it feels to be Bobby playing with me, time I got you, you do. Girl, you hold me all so softly, and you feed me, and you watch me, you do. Baby, you keep me in hey, friends. Um, sorry for the weird sounding voice. I unfortunately do have a little bit of a cough, hence <coughs> the cough drop. Um, but Nonetheless, we are working today. Probably all the food that I'm gonna be cooking today will probably be tossed, mostly because I don't want my sick germs to be on the food, but got some fun things going on today. Um, this is prep for, I don't think you can see it like this, but this is prep for a little personal pizza I'm doing, and yes, we're making a homemade dough. Um, I found the recipe online, but Man, I love making pizza. I love eating pizza and making your own dough is actually really easy. I think the recipe called for, um, I'll throw it on here, but like one tablespoon of active dry yeast, half a teaspoon of sugar, salt, a cup of warm water, and two and a half cups of bread flour or whatever flour you have. Um, knead it, let it rise for at least 30 minutes. Then you have your homemade pizza dough. So um, really easy. And then I'm also waiting for a kale gratin to come out of the oven. Um, typically, like I said, if I'm in the zone, I like to kind of batch content. So I'm waiting for that to pop out. Um, I'll show you actually, what I was going to show you right now is 
my Google Calendar, which I typically try to, sorry, a cough is coming. <coughs> mm, sorry. Um, what I typically try to do is, um, I do try to like block out that calendar time so I know what and kind of mentally prepare what um, recipes I'm gonna shoot that day. It kind of varies, but I also like to do that because I can like think about what ingredients are gonna go bad first or if I'm doing something with kale. Um, and I know about you know, the recipe calls for kale, I'll try to put those in the same day as well. You know, again, try to be efficient here. Um, so there's a lot of pre-planning that goes into it. It's not just kind of like, Think of a recipe and go, but um, I'm gonna, gonna try to take you along for the day um, and hopefully I get better as the day goes on. So the pizzas just came out of the oven. Look at this cute little personal pizzas. Um, got some mushrooms, salami, red onion, cheese sauce, of course. And what I'm more proud about is this homemade dough. Um, I think I guess I'm having pizzas tonight because I am only needing this much unless there's a better way to freeze this. While we're at it, we'll take a little check at the kitchen. On deck we have an Italian salad. I'm doing with radicchio, parsley, um, sun-dried tomatoes, artichoke hearts, red onion, um, and then we'll be doing a little fun pairing later. Pizza setup. I'm gonna figure out a setup for this guy though. I don't know where my thing is for this. Okay, hey guys, I am done shooting for the day. I am still feeling under the weather, so I don't wanna push it. Um, one lesson I've learned, filming, <coughs> oh my goodness, especially in the creative field, is that if I am super tired and trying to produce something, my creative part of my brain is already on like 50%, and so it's better to just stop for the day and to come back fresh because everything I've ever produced or created when I'm like tired or just exhausted, it always turns out like crap. Like truthfully, I just don't like anything I've ever made when I'm tired. So I learned my lesson, even if it's early in the day. Um, I did get a lot of recipes done this morning. Um, but one thing I wanted to go through is creative process. So I did not plan what I was about to say here, but creative process kind of just applies for everything. So. Um, I'd say there's two parts to it. One, which is like, you could go nature and nurture, right? So the family, my family, um, the way I was raised, I've always been around food, wine, ingredients, um, very tactile things. And I've eaten, I've always been interested in food. So I've had a lot of different flavors. And so there's part of recipe development that comes naturally to me. There's other parts where it's more, here's the ingredient, what can you make with it? And while I can think of a thousand things to do, Pinterest is one of my best friends in this case um, of things that I might think of, you know, say one of one of my Say one of my ingredients is cheese, right? You can do so many things with cheese, but um, Specific ideas I have I kind of like to look on Pinterest and see if it's already been done to see how people have done it And that kind of helps me narrow down where I'm going with a recipe um, so do some research and then once I kind of have all my ingredients for the recipe, um, I'll sketch it out. So um, for the like filming process before I just go into it, kind of messy, but you can see I kind of like, will write things like overhead or lid on and off, this is gonna be a reveal. I'm gonna slide it right and then we'll bring the dim to blur the camera. This isn't always how it goes, but it is nice to have it kind of set in mind. So when you set your scene, set your, um, set the scene, set your recipe up that like for soup, you're not gonna do it from a side angle cause you can't see it. Soup is always gonna be overhead. So kind of just having that down on paper. So when you start filming, because with food, you can't go backwards. That's the one thing is so, you know, once you flip the patty, there's no first flip again. So getting 
those things in order, getting your ducks in a row before you start filming is a really helpful thing. Um, and then like last but not least for recipe development itself, um, there's, I would say three really main things I think about, which is apart from lighting, lighting's always number one, but one is color. And so if I'm shooting a curry that is orange, I probably will not use, I'll try to stay away from orange props unless I'm trying to do a monochrome thing. Um, because it's just going to look dull and one dimensional. And there's a whole thing about color theory that you can look into. Um, but yes, color theory and, you know, we learned in school primary colors, all those things, um, understanding like if it's all green, how can I bring a pop of red or a pop of yellow? Like blue is not really edible. That's why you never see blue really in food photos. Um, that said, so color is the really main thing. Two is texture. Um, again, soups are pretty flat, but how do you add dimension and texture? You'll add a crouton, which adds volume. Um, texture and volume kind of fall within the same thing. You know, if you have a rice dish, um, <clears throat> rice is pretty flat, but you can fluff it up. You can add roasted vegetables to add texture. You can add sauces, which add texture. Different kinds of texture components are really important in a recipe. And then <clears throat> trying to suppress the cough. Third, I would say obviously in a recipe is flavor. Um, if you are a horrible cook, that is okay. You do not need to be a great cook for it to be a food photographer, but I have so many cookbooks. It's one of my favorite things to collect. I would highly recommend um, Samin Nasrat's Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. You might have seen it on Netflix, but the book is like, whether you're a basic or professional chef, it's one of my favorite books to kind of understand how dishes that you like come together and why they work because each component has to have salt, fat, acid, heat. Um, so, you know, when I'm making a recipe, like I mean, so many salads, but when I think of something, I think, okay, well, you know, here's a green. I'll probably add a green. I'll probably add a fruit. Can I add a dry fruit? Can I add a crunch? Can I add a fatty component like walnut or olive oil, avocado? Can I add, um, you know, heat? Can I add some peppers? Can I add, you know, um, some salt through cheese or through olives and kind of really understanding that is a really great way to start with recipe development if you just aren't familiar with like how ingredients work together. Um, but that's a little bit about my creative process. That's kind of pre-shooting. Um, if you have any more questions about it, if you want to see more about it, let me know below. Otherwise, um, I'm going to go start on editing. know if there's a uh, one that says oat milk because I would love an oat milk cup um, happy I don't even know what day it is anymore Thursday um, I don't know if I'm gonna share this video this might be a draft this might be posted who knows um, but I'm just having this like over first of all I'm still recovering from being sick I don't know how or why I got sick um, but it came on like a few days ago and I've just been having the worst cough. I, use, I've had, I know what COVID's like, this is not COVID, this is like just weird winter flu. Um, but I was running errands this morning, I'm already exhausted and it's 9.30. Um, but I just had this overwhelming thought of like, I'm so mad at my body right now, which is like a very honest thought, I think. Um, I haven't really shared my journey of Kind of just like self-image and stuff, but it's been a roller coaster. I am so much stronger than I used to be, but I gotta be honest, today it's just like, I did not get sleep because I was coughing so much. This is my second time being sick in probably the last seven weeks, like really, really sick. Um, and it's just frustrating because, you know, I try to do everything that is quote unquote healthy in terms of working out, getting sleep, drinking water. I don't, you know, I don't smoke or drink. I don't party. I um, get exercise in. I try to like take care of my stress. And I don't know, I was just like driving to UPS and thought, damn, I'm really pissed off in my body right now. Um, and it's not really about like how it looks, but just like what is going on in terms of like my throat and sickness. I had a really, really bad sickness in December um, and that like, I was out for the count for two weeks. Um, so I'm like, yeah, okay. That kind of threw me off at the beginning of the year, but um, it's fine, it was a minor setback. And now it's mid-February and here I am again, super sick. And so 
Um, really just to share that if you are feeling the same way or have felt the same way that it's totally normal to not love your body all the time, um, you can be honest with it. You can have a conversation with it. Um, especially in the work that I do, like, right, I'm with food, I'm surrounded by food, food, diet, working out, healthy, whatever it is, but um, I'm not getting down. It's more just naming it, acknowledging it, and letting myself know that I will be healthier, but I was annoyed because I had to, like, cancel a new workout class today. I'm not in the mood to work, and I need to. I'm just going to out of town on a trip on Sunday, and I'm just why is my body doing this? Um, but I know it's gotten me through worse things and I know it's super strong. Um, so I'm trying to understand if this is like a sign or a signal that I do need to rest a little bit because I have been going a bit um, from travels in Mexico City, which I just came back from last week. So, um, or two weeks ago, whatever it was. Um, but yeah, that is my two cents of the day. I'm gonna try to do one more day of shooting before I head out of town, um, get some editing done. Um, I will see you guys on the other side.